Good morning, and welcome to the Catholic Church of St. Mark. Please take this time to silence your cell phones, and as you do, let us rise as we begin our celebration of life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. may the Father of mercies, the God of all consolation, be with you. And in the waters of baptism, Corazon died with Christ and rose with him a new life, may she now share with him eternal glory. At the time of her baptism, Corazon put on Christ as we will now place the pole over her body, may she now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. In life, Corazon listened to the word of God, which guided her during the course of that life. May Christ now greet her with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father, as we place the Bible. The cross we've brought here today was carried by our Lord Jesus Christ in the hour of his suffering. May it now be a sign of hope for our sister Corazon. Lord Jesus Christ, you loved us unto death. Let this cross be a sign of your love for Corazon and for the people who have gathered here today. Most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond understanding, surround the family of Corazon with your love, that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith 
that your son who died on the cross was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant Corazon, who has gone to her rest in Christ, may she now share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. reading from the book of wisdom the souls of the just are in the hand of God and no torment shall touch them they seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead and their passing away was thought an affliction and their going forth from us utter destruction but they are in peace for if before men indeed they be punished yet is their hope full of immortality chastise the little they shall be greatly blessed because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those in tr who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, 
from death into life. You have set me up in great love in the face of hatred, crowning me with love beyond my power to Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Surely your kindness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the of my God forevermore. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose. So too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this in the word of the Lord, that we who are alive who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with the word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John. When Jesus arrived in Bethany, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away. Many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, 
your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. In the very first place, I'd like to extend my deepest sympathies and condolences to the family, the Cruz family, for the loss of their dear one, Corazon. And to all of you that are here, even those that might be praying with us remotely, it's a sad moment again. You can say this year is not easy for the family to go through something like this. But we come back here in this church, in this moment of prayer, when we seem to be left with no options at all, we know there is the, the option of returning to where we have come from at the end of life. Jesus has said, to Martha and Mary. I am the resurrection and the life. Because it was at the moment when Lazarus had died, the grief, the pain, and the sorrow in the family was too much to take in. And Jesus was not a stranger in this home. He comes to this family to be there for them and with them, that they can go through this moment together. That this moment can be a moment of the revelation of something way beyond what had happened to Lazarus, who they seem to see dead, Jesus comes to bring him back to life. In Lazarus, we see all humanity, that when life seems to be taken away and seems to be finished out of us, there is that new life, the new life. What makes it new? Because it's way different from the earthly life that we know. When Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life, the life beyond this earth is the life that is new in a way that death, Sorrow, pain, and all that is in that line has been overcome. At this moment of our sorrow, we are tested. This family is tested. Every time death comes, it's not easy. It's not something anyone could be used to and say, yes, I'll be fine. Sometimes we say words and like, you know, we'll be fine, we'll be strong. But deep within, we know how hurtful it is. Because it tests us to remind us that we are very human, we are frail, we are fragile. Our heart 
hearts are shattered, you know, because there is now a void that nothing and no one can fill like Korah did. As a mother, as a grandmother, as an auntie, as a friend, as a co-worker, as one who attracted in life so many. Because in our lives, we all have a mission. We don't live life alone. We don't live independently. We live with and around other people. There are those that we choose along the way in life, but there are those that we don't choose. We don't choose our family. We don't choose our children. We don't choose our relatives. But it's by God's way that it happens that we are surrounded by these people who know us. So those who knew Corazon in her life, growing up, her parents, her siblings, you know, her children, her husband, there are those who came to know her and, and the due course of life in her practice, especially being in the medical field, how many people she touched? How many? People she never, she, she never knew. People she never met again. You must always admire those people who are there when you're going through the worst of all the situations. The times we forget about them because they seem to be behind the scenes. Nurses, doctors, caregivers. Whereby they sacrifice their life for others. Even way beyond the borders. And I believe if wherever they are, they were able to make it here. Those whose lives Korah has died would be surprised, would be amazed. But God gave her a mission, a mission she accomplished, a mission we believe. Martha and Mary have said that we believe they believe after they've seen. They believe after knowing that Jesus was present with them to make a difference. No doubt that Korah's faith was a faith that we can all be proud of. That kind of breed is not very common. When they had nothing other than themselves and God blessing them with which they also blessed so many other people. Last night, those who were there at the chapel, I mentioned that, you know, Corazon means the heart, you know, the heart. We all have hearts. But when they say someone has a big heart, not because you're a physician, and you've seen it, and you say, oh yeah, this is it, I've seen it. But the big, the big heart is seen from how we express to others what is within us. It was more than her name, but her words, her actions, her generosity, her kindness. We can put so many of those attributes in one sentence, even more than we knew, but God knew. So we gather here, even in the midst of pain and sorrow. The second reading has said, that letter to the Philippians, console one another. In moments like this, is there when we need each other even more? I imagine the, the grandchildren, 
you know. We all know how grandmothers love their grandchildren. Some even say, I wish I had my grandchildren before my, my children, you know. I never ask why. Because, oh, yeah. So they know you, that the grandmother, Lola, you know, loves them, you know. Sorry for your loss. You'll miss her. But she's praying for you. She's praying for us. She's given it all. When I held her hand, you know, people in that situation of their frailty, when life has turned them into who they are, we must never forget their strength, you know? When you, when you saw her frail, you, you may have seen her to lose all her strength, her everything, no, but she had her life and her smile and her spirit, her spirit, you know? And she leaves that with us. As human beings, we are human, and we have the body and we have the soul. This body right here, the body, when its time comes, lifeless body, but the soul is the true nature and character of who we are. When they say so-and-so is a good person, so-and-so is a kind person, so-and-so is a wonderful person, because that does not leave us. That is what defines the authenticity of who we are created in God's image. That can never leave us. That will stay with us forever. The pictures will remind us, the memories, those fond memories. Some even say that I can even feel her speaking. I can remember the words. I feel them every day. When I have no strength, when I wake up, I get to hear and re-echo those words that she said. And it is in the hope of the resurrection that we must keep going on in this life, on this journey. We must keep going on. We must get our strong foot ahead because it's a journey, only that our sister has only gone way ahead of us. Jesus was present. Even when it seemed to take long, but he finally was able to come to the home of Martha and Mary, we believe that in this prayer of the Eucharist for our sister, Jesus is present. He's touching us by the shoulder, holding us by the hand, leading us through life, especially in the circumstances of the moment. May we pray for our sister in gratitude for the gift that God gave to this world and the gift that we wholeheartedly surrender, even painful as it may be, because God picks those he loves and those he has created, only to return to where they came from, and with the hope of when we'll be reunited with them at the end of time. Amen. Shall we now rise as we offer our prayers? Hear our prayer. We remember with love and affection the life of our sister, Corazon. May she always be in our prayers as we ask God's mercy. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Corazon's family and friends, for her children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, for all those that she considered family, and for all those to whom she taught the true meaning of being family, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Corazon, who received the blood the body and the blood of Christ in the Eucharist during her life, 
May she now share the table of the Lord in the heavenly kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who were caregivers to Corazon, especially Beth Barlaan, those who stayed with her and prayed with her, may they continue to be instruments of the Lord's healing touch, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the community gathered here, strengthen our hope that we may be a source of comfort and support to all who mourn, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our deceased re relatives and friends, parents, Candido and Beatrice, his children, Nat Jr., Minnie and Nate, may they now share with Corazon Christ's promise of eternal life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Corazon trusted in the Lord and now sleeps in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who serve in the military, those who sacrifice time with their own families to guard the freedom of our families, we pray. Lord, hear us. Into your hands, merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of our sister Corazon. Let faith be our consolation and eternal life our certain hope. We may this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant Corazon may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is through right and just our duty in our salvation. Always endeavor to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, mighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the sudden of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed and not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glories without end, we are claimed. indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way when supper was ended, he took the child listening once more, giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The, mis the mystery of pain. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us the fullness of charity together with Francine, our Pope, and very our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant Corazon, whom you've called from this world to yourself, Grant that she was united with your son in death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all. Pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, allowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distresses. We await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another this sign. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully granted, strengthened by it, our sister Carson may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We'll now have the prayers of the final commendation. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death in it itself. To your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Corazon in the sure and certain hope that together the whole of died in Christ will rise with him in the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Corazon in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with all the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to servants and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's be seated please. Hello everyone, my name is Brandon. I'm Cora's grandson, the son of her son, Napoleon Jr., who some of you may know as Nap or Joji. On behalf of the family, I'd like to express our gratitude for being here to celebrate Corazon. Thank you for those who traveled from near and far to be with us today. Thank you to those who are joining remotely to show your love, even if you weren't able to attend in person. Thank you to those who shared your experiences, condolences, memories, and time to keep Cora's spirit vibrant and alive. Ultimately, we thank you for loving Cora. We'll miss her dearly, and knowing she has such a wonderful community, here to celebrate her life is such a generous comfort. After the ceremony, we'll have some refreshments available in the next room across the hall. We'd love for you all to join us. Thank you. On behalf of the Catholic Church of St. Mark, we'd like to extend our deepest sympathies and condolences to the family 
for the loss of your dear one, Corazon. And uh, we'll keep you in our prayers and our availability in support during this most difficult moment. Thank you, Dick Mike, uh, for our liturgy coordination. And uh, thanks, Vicky, our music minister, for such a wonderful ministry. Thank you to Belly, and uh, thank you to everyone, uh, Nelly, you know, helping out there. And to all of you that are here, even those that were there last night, even those that will always be in the coming days, please thank you so much. It's so comforting to the family during these most difficult moments. And to the uh, to Grand Funeral Home, thank you always for being there for families in these most difficult moments. To those who are praying with us remotely, wherever you are, thank you for sparing that time to be in spirit with us. As we rise and pray for God's blessing, eternal rest grant unto her, o Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto her, o Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may the might God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Rest your feet, the brothers of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. to his angels, his gifts.